Hi. Today we're going to talk about my favorite character in all of comic books, the Silver Surfer. Now, I have a pretty good Silver Surfer collection. I got all my Silver Surfer toys out. Got my drink ready to go. And, and I've given myself a goal. A goal to kind of complete the the early stuff. You know, anything where, where he shows up in Fantastic Four or he shows up in, you know, his, his own comic. Um, the first series and the second series, and then a couple of the other little ones that he shows up in. I'm not looking for really anything that goes past the, the 90s or whatnot, but I'd like to kind of fulfill it, and, and uh, I think I'm pretty close. Uh, I collected a lot of these as a kid, so I never got rid of most of my Silver Surfer books, um, just because I loved them so much. So, um, But before I get started, uh, if these types of topics and issues and discussions uh, interest you, please click like and subscribe. So just to jump into the collection now, I'm going to start with the Fantastic Four books uh, that I acquired. A lot of these I got young as a kid, so they weren't, you know, some of the books are pretty pricey, so I got lucky and got them when I was younger. Um, the I'm going to save, I, I, I got the Grail book, the, the Silver Surfer Grail book that you can you probably all guess what it is. I'm going to save that for the end, um, but the, the books that I, I acquired, you know, I got these three when I was, I was a young adult and I went to an estate sale and they had boxes and boxes and I just bought a bunch of the boxes and they weren't, they weren't charging very much for this stuff. So I got 49, which I think is the book, like that's the best book of, of the early Silver Surfers. Um, even though 48 is the first appearance. Um, for both characters. This is the one that really, like, it's the first full appearance of Galactus. They're both on the cover. They're not on the cover of 48, but I think it's really an important book. I would grade this, this is probably above a six somewhere. It might even be a 6.5, who knows. So um, I'm happy with it. it it's probably the, one of the best books in my collection. Um, and then I got 50 along with this. This one's a slightly lower grade. I would say this might be closer to a five or a 5.5. And then 57. So I'm missing 55. So that's one of the ones that's you know part of the part of the um, the expedition of comic book buying for the Silver Surfer that I want to dip into. Um, and then I have 72 and 77. So I'm missing maybe four or five of them in that early Fantastic Four run. Now, that's one of the things that, that's really great about the Fantastic Four books. The Fantastic Four books, which by the way, I'm not a huge, huge fan of the, the four main characters. They're cool, you know, that family dynamic is great, but a lot of the characters they introduce in the writing, like, you know, I sit and read Fantastic Four books all the time and they are so well written. I tend to gravitate more towards the ones that are like, you know, in space where they fight the scrolls or they're dealing with Sentinels or they're dealing with Galactus, um, especially the Silver Surfer. So uh, those are the books that, that really kind of, you know, ping my interest. So, you know, Silver Surfer is not in this one, but this is the introduction to the first Herald that isn't the Silver Surfer um, in Airwalker. So I have that one and I have the whole series. So I have 121. 122 and 123. And then he had another, uh, it, was, it was a three issue series, um, 155 to 157. And I have all of those too. So for the most part, I have anything, you know, where he was introduced in the Fantastic Four. I'm just missing a few pieces and, I, and I'd like to someday collect those, get those on there. And then I also have Thor 193. Um, I'm missing the Tales to Astonish where he, you know, he's, he's matched up with the Hulk and I'm missing a couple here and there. You know, there, there's ones where like, he showed up in Dracula once where like, I'd like to get that book. I think it's a John Buscema book. So I, I'd, I'd love to have, have that. Now the Silver Surfer in particular, this is a, is a character arc that I don't see too often, and I really feel like it's underutilized. He really is a brilliantly crafted concept, uh, if you will. And, and I'm trying to think of other times where this has happened. So he's really the, he's the reluctant hero, but he, he, you know, he's, 
he's kind of a villain, but he's there because he saved his entire planet. So if you don't know the story of the Silver Surfer, he was, you know, a, a high level scientist at Zen La, which is a planet off in the middle of nowhere. And Galactus, the, uh, the devourer of worlds, would go around and the only way he could sustain life is to suck all the life out of any planet that he comes across. And he came across Zen La. Uh, the Silver Surfer, who was no, known as Norrin Rad, went out and um, as, as kind of a, um, an ambassador, went out to talk to him. And he negotiated a deal. He's like, look, I will be your herald. And I would go out in the universe and find planets that are appropriate for you to consume if you will spare my planet. So he, he sacrificed himself to servitude, to this, this genocidal uh, world devourer. And he's just locked into it. Now, the interesting part of this is it's kind of like, you know, this, this makes him a villain. And he's serving as a henchman to the, you know, probably one of the scariest villains there is. I mean, he's, he's the equivalent to Unicron, if you've ever seen the, the Transformers movie. Um, he, he's now locked in to this duty that he has to serve. And he has all of these moments of, of humanity where he realizes that like, th this isn't fair to do this to this group. And, and he, he revolts against his master again and again and again. And it, it's a really interesting character. I, w I wish I saw more. I mean, the, the only couple that I can think of that are like that would be like the hunchback of Notre Dame um, in the book. I mean, he's, he's a subservient to Frollo, but he, he has this level of um, empathy or, or sympathy towards Esmeralda and he goes against his master or even like as far as like Darth Vader, one of the greatest villains of all times, he's a henchman. He was a henchman to the emperor. So when he, I mean, and in, bear in mind, his, his character arc took a lot longer, but when he reached the point where he realized, you know, the, the harm that was happening to Luke, he did turn on his master and all of a sudden became good for that moment. And even though there's a lot more humanity in Norrin Rad as a character than some of these other characters that I mentioned, he, he really is that, re that reluctant uh, villain, but also reluctant hero. And he's, he's locked in to, you know, serving uh, his master, which is uh, really interesting. I, you know, it's one of the things that's just completely fascinating about him. Another thing too, I want to, I want to add this when, um, when I was younger, I, uh, I, yeah, I, I love Joe Satriani's music, but I didn't know about Joe Satriani until I was, I was going through Kmart one day and I'm, I'm dating myself by even mentioning Kmart, but I was going through Kmart one day and there was a CD there, or this was tapes, I guess at the time, there was a tape there and it had the Silver Surfer on it. I'm like, whoa, I love the Silver Surfer. What's this about? And I literally only bought that tape because it had the Silver Surfer on it. I took it home, I listened to it, and I'm like, this is unbelievable. And then, as I noticed, like in, in some of his music, he would, um, he would incorporate different themes. Like, you know, he talks about, or he didn't talk about, he, <laughs> he, he had titles or whatnot that were all about, you know, surfing or, in, you know, in the universe or going back to, to, to find his love, Shalabal, or going to Zen La. Um, he's only got maybe like five or six songs that, that are of that topic, but I was, I was, very interested in Joe Satriani just for that one reason. So, um, in, uh, in pop culture, he pops up here and there. Um, not enough, but he does pop up. Okay. So the next series that I want to cover is the, the first solo series that the silver surfer was in, uh, which was a shorter series. I can complete this. I'm, I'm not fully there yet, but I have, I have most of them. I think there's, there's 18, and I think I have 14. So um, I bought Silver Surfer number one as a kid and I still have the sticker on it. I got it for $40 at my, uh, my local comic book store, Bob City Comics in Framingham, Massachusetts. Um, and I, I just kept it ever since. I, I, I'd say that this is at least a six, five, maybe a seven, maybe, you know, maybe over a seven. Um, I've, I've got two. And then very recently, I bought this on uh, hip and it was an auction. And, you know, people were bidding on it, but nobody went that high. And I feel like I stole.
stole it. And, and when I got it, I mean, it's a, it's an eight, five, maybe a nine. I mean, it's perfect. And I just can't believe I got it. I paid, I paid a lot for it, but I didn't, um, you know, I paid, you know, maybe half of what it's worth. So I did finally get Silver Surfer number three. This was the last big book of all the Silver Surfers that I wanted to get. Um, I had gotten four um, a few years back, right before it blew up. So I got lucky. Uh, I probably, picked, it actually shot up. I think it's this book in its condition will be worth like somewhere between eight and a uh, thousand, 800,000. Um, and I paid way less than half that. So I, I lucked out. Um, I got, I've had five for a long time. Um, and then I'm missing six and seven. So I got to get those two. Shouldn't be too hard to do. I have eight. This one's a little beat up. I have nine. This one's really beat up. Um, but it's an insignificant one. So I'm like, I don't feel like I have to go out and get that the high grade. I have 10 in a really decent grade. Take some of these down. I have 11, a little beat up, 12, 13's a little beat up. I have 14, which I recently got, maybe about a year ago, and that is immaculate. I, I, I wouldn't want to send this off to be a slab because then I can't read it, but um, it's, a, it's, it's a really high grade, and I feel like I got a pretty good deal on it. I didn't pay very little for it, but, I, you know, I... I probably paid maybe 200 bucks for it. So um, I got my money's worth for something that's so high grade. And these are, these are hard to come by in, in, in decent grades. So I have 15, I'm missing 16 and 17. And then I also have 18. Um, and then, so the, the next series wasn't really a series, it was just one. And in my, in my eyes, this is one of the most underrated books it, you know, if, if you've never read Silver Surfer number one, volume two, I get, look for it. Find it on eBay. Look, you know, if you see it, like if you go to a show, check it out. John Byrne, I think he wrote it too, but he, he did all the art in it. And it has all of the iconic images of the Silver Surfer in it. All of the iconic images of Galactus. And it, it sort of retells the story it gives you a lot more texture as to what happened um, when he first became the Silver Surfer. And it's it's really one of the, the best book. And, and you could probably get it for less than 20 bucks. Um, if you want to get a beater copy, you could get it for almost nothing. It's it, And they're out there. Um, it's I don't think it's in high uh, uh, print, but there's, there's plenty of them. So um, read it. Just read it. Uh, the Silver Surfer Volume Three, Number One. And this is this is a great book. So as a kid, I had like one through seventy-five, and then I had you know just a couple here and there until the end of the run. Not many near the end because I just you know I was in college. I wasn't reading books, but comic books at the time. So I uh, I ended up getting rid of a lot of them, and then just recently I've just decided I'm like you know what I don't I don't do full runs. Uh, it's just too it's too difficult to try to find the run of everything, but I, I'm going to do it for the Silver Surfer. And so I'm kind of, you know, this, this video is a little bit of me, uh, my, my, my coming out party as far as like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get all the Silver Surfers and, and hopefully it might be years from now, but I'll do that video where I've completed it. But, I, you know, I'm, I've got all the big pieces in place. Um, so I have maybe... 60% of the, the Silver Surfer run. So two, three, I'm not gonna go through all of them, but I, I, you know, I've got all the way up into, um, I think out of one through 50, I'm missing maybe six. And then I've got, you know, 50 through 100, I've probably got 30% of those. So, I mean, you know, they'll just chip away. The, the interesting thing is, Silver Surfer is harder to come by. You go to a show or you go through boxes and they're like, people don't sell their Silver Surfer books. So they're not that easy to find. Um, so you just, got, I got to keep my eye out. I keep a good list of what I have and what I don't have, like either on my phone or you know, I have it in this Excel spreadsheet and I also have it in Key Collector. So I can look through that. And, and if I'm at a show, I've made the mistake of buying the same book twice, but uh, you know, it's usually a cheap book. So I, I, I'm over it, but 
Um, and the last thing I wanted to touch on, and I, I, I include this in the run for the Silver Surfer, um, and that's going to be, you know, both uh, Thanos Quest 1, 2. These are great books, by the way. I mean, really great books. And then, I mean, you, you knew this was coming. So the Infinity Gauntlet. Um, it's, it's unfortunate in the, in the MCU that they didn't have the rights to the Silver Surfer when they did the Infinity Gauntlet. Because if you've read the comic, he's the key character. He's the one that really is the foil to um, Thanos. And he's also the one that was there and witnessed his uh, achievement of getting the last stone. He was there for part of the way. Um, he understood how the gauntlet worked and he's the one that goes to the Avengers. It's not the Incredible Hulk. Um, it's, it's the Silver Surfer that arrives at, at Doctor Strange's um, mansion and he's like, Thanos is coming. And that's the classic famous line and the image you see in the comic. And that's the Silver Surfer that does that. So. Um, it's it's really unfortunate that he wasn't in it, but it, so, so many characters. What are you going to do? Um, so, I, you know, I got this whole series. And lastly, as I said, I was going to uh, let you in on the big grail that I had received. Um, I got this at quite a deal. So I don't buy that much off Heritage um, because they're all slabs usually, but... Um, you're not going to find this book not slabbed too often. I mean, yeah, there's some out there, but I wanted to make sure I'm not getting a piece of crap. So um, what I'll do is I'll go on and I'll bid. Um, I've got a list of, you know, maybe eight grails that I'm looking for. And then, you know, a list of a bunch of others that I'm like, I'd love to have. And, I, you know, I'll, I'll pay for it at some point. But I'm always trying to find it cheap. So uh, um, I track it and then when it comes up, I'll just bid and then I'll bid like, you know, half of what it's worth and maybe I get lucky and 10% of the time, maybe even less than I get lucky, but it's worth it. So as you guessed, uh, I purchased Fantastic Four number 48. This is the first appearance of both Galactus and the Silver Surfer. Um, I got it in a 6.5. I mean, according to Comic Price Guide, a 6.5 slab is worth, you know, $3,800. Um, I didn't pay $3,800, so uh, I'm, uh, I'm really excited that I finally got this. Um, I, uh, it, you know, it, it was cheap enough where I didn't need to do a payment plan or anything like that. And, and uh, I acquired one of my, I want to say my biggest grails, but most important to me because Silver Surfer is my favorite character. So this is the first appearance and the most sought after and most valuable book related to the Silver Surfer. I now have it. So I've gotten most of the important, key, actually all the important keys taken care of. I think that the next biggest is going to be uh, Fantastic 455, which, you know, isn't, isn't going to kill me. And then, um, uh, Tales to Astonish, was it 92, I believe, or 93? Um, you know, those two are probably the biggest ones that are that are left to, to finish the collection. So, uh, thanks for watching. My name is Fox Sellers. Uh, if you're interested in videos related to, you know, Silver Surfer comic books, if you're interested in fine art, movies, stories, character arcs, uh, camping, hiking, travel, any of those things, please click like and subscribe and you're going to get chimed in to future videos just like this. Some of them I think you're going to love. Thanks.